welcome to the strangest gig I've ever played, True Tales, from the studio and the stage. I'm your host, Chris J. Norwood. On the podcast with us today is one Andrew Sherman, also known as Drulio. Currently, Andrew is a very talented concert photographer here in the DFW area. But in a past life, he was a musician living in L.A., playing with the comedian Andy Dick. And boy, does he have some strange stories, as you can imagine. So let's get to it. Welcome back to the podcast. As I said in the intro, I'm very excited about this one. Andrew has got some pretty wild stories that had me reeling. And I can't wait for you to hear them. In addition to being a very talented photographer and musician, Andrew is also host of the new podcast, Dallas Famous which you can find on Deep Ellum Radio and wherever you get podcasts. Dallas Famous is a part tongue-in-cheek, but an all-earnest pursuit to get to know some of the people who make Dallas great. It is a fantastic podcast, and I highly encourage you to check it out, especially if you're from the area. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone that the Strange Escape podcast is intended for adult audiences, and as such, some of the language and stories in this episode may not be suitable for younger listeners. All right, buckle in, y'all. Let's get ready for some of the strangest tales we've heard to date. Here's Andrew Sherman. Any incident I may speak of here today has long passed the statute of limitations. Andy Dick was never arrested while I was around because uh, he's been arrested a lot sure. of times. And some stories may be slightly altered due to the possible short-term memory issues that I'm experiencing in life. Anyway, that's I just had to read that to start. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Andrew Sherman, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. And man, thanks for reaching out. I'm I'm super excited to to get to hear these stories and um, get I'm to talk actually to you a today. fan. Your podcast is really well done. Thank you very Interesting. much. It's, I've had a lot of fun doing it. It's uh, it's been really cool. Cool. Get to talk to people and hear the stories. So. Yeah, I mean, I like it because a lot of people have musicians, but like it's a real specific angle, and I feel like you get better moments maybe than other people just asking basic general music that's questions. the idea yeah that's the idea i mean you know any, anybody can hear you know the generic you know what's your inspiration for such and such track but, right right i mean i want to hear the stories <laughs> yeah agreed it's more fun <laughs> so man tell me about tell me about your current gig what, what you kind of what you do currently yeah currently i'm a photographer in dfw julio mm-hmm. photo is my you know moniker yeah and uh, i just mostly shoot bands uh i shoot for the dallas observer i'll shoot for live for live music which is a national publication um and i'll do my own stuff uh, i shoot for a lot of the venues yeah and, you know that's pretty much what i'm doing that's great so w- which venue is your favorite to shoot or would you rather well, not say deep no it's okay deep Ellum art company is my home base and that's yeah. where i cut my teeth and that's where i really got to be a good concert photographer yeah. and i love the lights there um so that's probably my favorite, but um, the drawback there is there's not, it's like, well, it's a good thing and a bad thing, but the stage is just a little bit elevated. So I guess mm-hmm. as far as like really big stage rooms, I guess Granada is probably the yeah. first and favorite. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I've, I've played Granada a handful of times. It's always a blast. It's fun. I mean, Jay Simon's the main shooter there and it's 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 not as fun anymore because he's so good. I'm just like, why, why do I need to go? He's already <laughs> doing a great job. But if he's not there, sometimes I shoot for him. Yeah. But he, yeah, it's it's a good room and depending on who's doing the lights, it's, it's an unbelievable time. So. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. So what's it like for you as, um, I mean, being on the other end, so, so I know what it's like for me being at a strange gig and like being the musician on that side of it. What's it like for you, like watching a strange gig or watching a gig meltdown uh, on the other side of it? You know, I, I'll say there's so much talent in town. I'm not just saying this to be nice. There's yeah. only a few times where I've seen a band literally melting down where I'm like, this is like, reminds me of a rehearsal that I once had where we didn't know the songs yet. Yeah. Um, I won't say the, the name. It's it's not comfortable. Um, sometimes what's weird is it's for me, it's, it's a venue I've never been to. The lights are always an issue in smaller venues. Yeah. Um, a size of crowd will change the dynamic for the band and obviously for, for me. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I was a musician for a while Yeah. and, uh, I'll say the biggest difference for me is I feel so much less pressure because 
even though I'm going to work and I need to perform, nobody's looking at me. It's just, yeah. I don't, if I don't feel well, it doesn't even matter. I, I know I'm going to get through the shoot, no problem. And it's like when I used to play shows, I would get so stressed out if I was sick or tired or whatever. And I was not taking care of myself. So that would happen a lot. Right. You know? So, um, so when was that? When were you and, and what did you play? I was a singer songwriter. I started, you know, well, I played, I sang in choir and played sax in school. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got into it. But then I, I taught myself piano and uh, I'm always early for stuff, like mm -hmm. everything. It's just, it's people are like, how do you do that? I'm like, I can't stop. And so like as a kid, I'd be ready for rehearsal or for whatever. Somebody's picking me up for a ride and I would just be at the piano waiting for hours. So that's kind of how I learned that's cool. to do that. Yeah. And then, you know, picked up the guitar somewhere in my mid twenties and yeah, tried to do the, L the LA band thing for a while um, with different groups of people. Is that where you're from, LA? No, no. I mean, I was born in New York, uh, okay. then migrated in high school to outside of Chicago, went to school in Chicago, and then, yeah, you know, trying to go to LA and make the dream happen like yeah. a lot of people do. So what uh, What did that look like? What did that look like, trying to make the dream happen? What did it was, f I had a lot of fun, probably too much fun, but also it was, you know, everybody says, well, it's really, it's harder than you think. And I'm like, no, nah, yeah, but it's different for me. No, it was, <laughs> it was ridiculous. And like when I got there, it was still kind of cool. And then like by the time I left, which I was in LA from 91 till, I don't know, like 16, 15, it just was, I was, it was too much. I mean, yeah. I stopped pursuing stuff years before I left LA, yeah. honestly, because I was just like, eh, this is just not going anywhere. Just got anywhere. burnt out. Burnt out. You know, the rejection factor really starts to weigh on you after a while, you know. Yeah, especially I bet in LA. Where... Yeah. You know, I mean, look, every good looking, talented person from every small town in America ends up in LA at some point. They may not stay there very long, but they're there. And you you have to be more than great you have to be great you have to be likable you have to have kind of like a following before you get there anyone that asked me i'm like if you want to go to la you better already have a following here because they're not going to even you're going to get lost you're you know? gonna, yeah they're going to talk to you yeah exactly so let's get into the let's get into the andy dick stuff right <laughs> how did you first off i don't think i even remember andy dick having a band or being a musician. Yeah, anyway. that's partly why I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you how did you meet up with them? What like what was the circumstances surrounding yeah, that? Yeah, so I went to school at Columbia College in Chicago, and it had a direct affiliation with Second City Comedy Theater. Okay, because uh, Sheldon Batinkin, who was one of the founding members of Second City, was also the theater director at uh, Columbia. So. Anyway, I got there a year after Andy Dick went to Columbia, but I remember going, I was, in, I was into the comedy thing and I went to a comedy best of class and our scene scenes from previous years and his name was on the program. So Andy Dick, I, that's all I knew, but I'm like, you don't forget that name, Andy Dick, like what the hell? Yeah, it's a pretty unforgettable name. Yeah. And then cut to, I went to LA, I was still in college, in fact, I didn't finish college right away because I went to LA to visit and stayed and, uh, my agent was like, go oh, hang out with this guy who, you know, is one of my clients. And he took me to a comedy show and then Andy was performing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, oh, Andy Dick, that's got to be the same guy. And so afterwards, uh, I was talking to him and he was all excited. And I was excited because I was fresh in LA. I was 21. Like, I, I didn't know anybody. I literally went there without knowing anybody. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God, somebody to hang out with. And so he, he was like, I, yeah, I was like, I know who you are. He's like, oh, yeah, I totally know you, too. And I was oh, really? like, yeah, well, yeah. Okay, and so, yeah. <laughs> so then he was like, do you have any weed? And so we went and got stoned and that was kind of like our relationship. <laughs> and like about three or four weeks in, he admitted, he's like, I didn't know you're just good looking and I just wanted to hang out with you. So, um, so you met him and then when did y'all, uh, he was doing the comedy thing and were he you trying to do the comedy thing also? Uh, yeah. And I wasn't doing stand up, and neither was he. We were doing like the improv stuff, we were okay. doing sketch, Harold uh, stuff, um, you know, um, and yeah, and he was, we were also doing the acting, you know, trying to get, but he was, man, I should have known right away meeting him that like, I didn't have what it took if that's what it takes, because I couldn't do what he did. I mean, he would go into a room and everybody was like, who is that? And I mean, I'd go in a room and, you know, a couple of girls might notice me. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. That'd be it. He just had this thing. Um, but yeah, but he was, we we're both struggling and he, I think he finally got the Ben Stiller show. And so I basically was his son's nanny for a summer. Okay. Um, and then, you know, really, really the band was formed because he just didn't like to be on stage alone. 
okay. just wasn't fun or he was nervous or all of the above. So where, so, where, like, when was this timeline wise, like in his career? You said he was on the Ben Stiller show. Oh yeah, then... no, this was like we. He was sleeping on my futon when we met. Uh, okay, like he had not succeeded. He had done a couple things. In fact, he hadn't done anything really. Yeah. Um. He, something about him. He turned down more roles than any really? most people ever get. Yeah. He just got offered so much stuff that, and he just really, when he was still together in his head, he uh-huh. had a pretty clear picture. Although he did turn down Saturday Night Live, which he says he regrets. So that was. I would imagine you that was a mistake. That. <laughs> yeah, he was. That's how full of himself he was. He thought he was bigger than that at the time. Um, but yeah, so I and don't the know. Ni- just, in the mid nineties for SNL was pretty big. Big. Time yeah, this stuff. is right before that. Okay. This is like right. This is like ninety two, okay. ninety one. So yeah, he had yeah. A, it was it was kind of on a dip, and like we you know we knew Chris Farley from Chicago. He had just joined the show. Yeah. And so it was sort of going back up, but um, yeah, it, you know. And so anyway, people would always ask him to do like he would do this show called uh, Uncabaret which they still do in LA, which would be a bunch of like comics that you know who they are now, but at the time, some of them were a little less known. Yeah. And so I would just do songs with him. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd play guitar and sing backups and I'd be the straight man, you know, both literally and figuratively. And yeah. uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. So were they like, were they comedy songs? All comedy. Yeah. All comedy. I think the first one was Look at Me, which he would put a, like, well, it evolved, but he would put a wig on and glasses Uh and and just like, look at me, like, because he wanted attention. Like that (laughs) was kind of his whole vibe. But you know, uh, other song titles include the A Dick theme, uh, Mad course. About Cunt. Um, yeah, there's some, there was some, you know, uh, Cock and Balls is when I still play sometimes if I play out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. That's a good one. Yeah, dirty ones. But at the beginning, okay, so like just to give you the timeline. So we're doing these shows. It was me and him, then a couple other people kind of joined us, uh, Tim. Yeah. Uh, Walsh and David Paul Windham and Paul Henderson. It kind of was like the four of us. Uh-huh. And uh, and y'all were playing just like, you know, rock and roll type songs, but comedy songs. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Mickey Dolan said we were true punk. Okay. <laughs> because like we just, we weren't following any rules and we were just didn't care. And we were really, none of this would work today in this PC environment. I yeah. mean, we, the fact that he's not canceled yet, I guess he is. I don't know. Anyway, today's not what we're talking about. But yeah, it was it was a different time. And Shit, I mean, yeah. I honestly, there'd be times where I was like, I can't believe you're saying this stuff. <laughs> it was so shocking even at the yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was the Howard Stern time. And yeah, and actually, that's the thing. That's the first big thing we did. We were doing this for a little while. You know, all comedians, like Ryan Stiles actually told me this one night in a bar um, that uh, he was like, all comedians just want to be rock stars. And when he told me that, that's, that's when I kind of quit doing comedy and like kind of dove into music personally. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're doing that. Were you all playing comedy clubs or were you all doing like rock venues on well, other, with other we bands? Were, or? We would just do these. It was mostly comedy stuff. Yeah. Like we did like the the improv once and com- we, we well, it wasn't a show, but we ended up with Pauly Shore on stage at the comedy store one night. That was yeah. crazy. Um, Chris Rock was there that night. Yeah, I know I'm just dropping names left and right. No, that's <laughs> that's incredible, man. You're blowing uh, my mind. Yeah, but uh but yeah, what was it? Um Oh yeah, the improv in San Diego asked us. Okay, so the timeline of this is so now he he had gotten news radio. Mm-hmm. Like he'd okay, done a yeah. few things, but he's on news radio now. Yeah. So he's like And that was like his big break. That was his big break. And that was like he was cute little Matthew, I think was his character's name, and he was just like you know, maybe like slightly effeminate, dorky, but yeah. just adorable and endearing. Yeah. And these places, like, you know, the improv is like, we want, you want your show. We want the whole show. Yeah. And he said, it's not Matthew from News Radio. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Nobody ever heard that. Oh, man. Ever. <laughs> so that first improv, there was two shows in San Diego. That Those were fine. But I just remember, because at the time, he he was early on, like he would have somebody videoing, which I don't know where any of this footage is. I would love to know. Um, and he was, they were interviewing people after the show. And there was this like, dude, like old, you know, he's like, I was in two wars. <laughs> I've got a piece of strap this big in my leg. That was the worst pain I've ever been in in that my life. Like the show like really upset him. It was, this, you know. <laughs> The show, every show, like, well, when we had the full compliment, every show started like this. It would just be Andy, and he would be in a suit, uh-huh. and he would be very nervous, and he'd be telling these jokes, and it would start off by something like, hello, everybody, um, I'm Andy Dick, and I'm doing the show sober. Um, this is the first show, so, sober, sober show I've done ever. And and then he just starts to like tell these jokes and they're really cute little jokes. Like yeah. it's like he takes out an AA pamphlet and he's like, Okay, do you have a drinking problem? Number one, do you like to drink 
alone. He's like, duh. You know, and like, it's just like saying, yeah. they're just really cheesy. And for me, if people were laughing hard at this point in the show, I would get worried because I'm like, they're not going to get yeah. this show at all. I mean, like Auburn was a good example of that. Yeah. Um, That's University. like pseudo Andy Kaufman esque where like, he he's... was very much inspired by Andy. Yeah. Kaufman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so like the, the fourth or fifth one is like the number five. Do you have memory loss? Uh, no number five you have memory <laughs> loss and it's yeah. funny yeah and then you hear this no this voice in the back going oh yeah that's really fucking funny <laughs> and like you start to like you know there's like some uncomfortable stuff and and like it starts to build and you like it's this ginormous sweaty man bearded long hair yeah. and he is heckling hardcore yeah and andy was like oh my god paul that's that's Paul. That's my sponsor. Wait, are you drunk? Wait, wait. You, you have eight years sobriety. He's like, not in a row. And he like makes his way to the stage. And we would tell the security about this. And in some places, they didn't get it. Yeah. And they, he would come on stage and he would start like making fun of Andy. And Andy would run off stage. And, and he comes back and he starts dancing with Andy. And he's trying to make up. And Andy's just mad. And Andy punches him in the stomach. In the stomach. Yeah. And he has gone back and filled his mouth with chunky corn chowder. Yeah. And he throws up all over Andy's face. <laughs> and Andy, like the specific, was like, it has to get on my glasses because it's more pathetic. It drips off my glasses. Yeah. That's how the show would start. Man, that's some shock. And people would like be calling for weeks, like betting their girlfriends, like if it was real or not, you know? Yeah. Like it was, it was nuts. Sometimes it would get on my pedal board, which is not nice. Yeah. And then I'd have to go out. Sometimes I'd have to go out there and, and sing a song to like for him to change. <laughs> Cause it would be that bad. Yeah. Well, no, no, he had to change every time, but I'm just saying like there was sometimes there would be somebody else. There was, we had Vicki Lewis from the okay. news radio, which sometimes come with us on the road. So she would sing a song and I always preferred that. Cause I was like, I don't want to be the one Yeah. to like take the next. <laughs> next moment on stage <laughs> but anyway so yeah 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 that's that was like the the beginning and then we started to do we did we did like a weekly thing for a year at the key club and then we did like the viper room and we did the mint and so yeah. we did like these residencies there so were most people coming were they coming because of in la news yes. radio well no in la they they started to get wind of it okay but yeah yeah it, when we would tour colleges it was news radio and yeah they were rarely prepared for what they were getting even yeah. though we would try to warn them you yeah. know and the internet wasn't what it, what it is now so it wasn't like they were getting a heads up about it right we didn't get i think we got mentioned like rarely you know and then he would be on e and i wouldn't be in the picture and you know it was you know i would that was the thing he was he was people that like me are not they don't like him yeah <laughs> they just don't like the way he treats people and honestly i was i probably took more abuse than i needed to but i thought okay if i just hang on a little longer you know, we'll have some kind of radio thing and then I can just like, you know, live off of that. And I'm pretty happy it didn't work out that way. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause you were kind of hoping to kind of, kind of parlay that into a career for yourself. Maybe I thought so. That's, yeah. that's what I was thinking, you know? And I mean, it was fun. I mean, I got to like get, I was going to some really cool parties and, you know, like Reese Witherspoon is like checking us out at one show. It's like, it was like that, Yeah, you know, it was cool. Um, and how old are you at this point? Like 23, 24. Yeah. And, uh, and then we did Howard Stern. That was kind of like the first big thing really. And uh, it was weird because Howard was so nice to him. He didn't give him any crap. Um, didn't call him out for anything. He had huh. just gotten sober. He had he gotten arrested. And then he got sober. A lot of our songs came out of him getting arrested, actually. Andy Dick? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and so, it, it, you know, he was really nice. And, like, uh, we sang the song Little Brown Ring was the song we sang, which mm -hmm. was one of my songs called Little Black Bugs, which yeah. we just changed because we didn't have any music. We didn't have any song. We were just, like, I don't even know what we were playing. We were just messing around. Yeah. So, yeah. And Howard loved it. And, uh, yeah, so I thought that was kind of, like, the start of some big things. But, you know, he's such a self-saboteur it was not yeah. to be <laughs> for so many reasons and how long so after news radio ended was he still doing the band thing after that yeah 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 uh -huh. we were doing that all all through that um, i used to hang out sometimes on the set news radio got to hang out with phil hartman a few times that's cool yeah yeah i want to hear about the woodstock 99 show okay yeah um so basically woodstock 99 
they were having celebrities introduce the bands. So okay. that's how we even ended up. Our band would have never been there. We yeah. Were, you know. Oh, by the way, the band was called Andy Dick and the Bitches of the Century, <laughs> which that's we actually... Brilliant. Yeah, and, and we started it prior to the turn of the century, which was kind of the whole point at the time. It was like, it's still, we're still a, just a new century, you know? Um, and so we were Bitches, which I thought was hilarious, but... Um, that is a very punk rock name. <laughs> yeah, kind of, you know? And uh, so, yeah, so we end up, at Woodstock and it was the, we were only there the first day he was still on probation um and so here's one footnote so there's two stages right and everyone credits James Brown as being the first music of the festival but we played the first notes of Woodstock 99 okay because there was like a second stage with 60,000 people smaller stage yeah 60,000 people 60,000 <laughs> uh, it's so weird to even think of it um I remember they had taught me this song cock and balls that morning so i'm like basically on stage playing a song i don't even know yeah which did not appreciate which is typical of that band um but yeah but it was this little tour called spitfire that we did a bunch and with people like ice t and woody harrelson and and like activists like the president of the sierra club yeah and uh so we got to do that so we were the first act of the whole day and we were the first like no one else on that little thing was doing music they're all speaking yeah so it was kind of a warm-up but we played our song before anyone else i mean i remember driving in a golf cart hearing james brown start and we were off stage already oh that's crazy nobody cares yeah <laughs> i think it's cool <laughs> that nobody is cool cares. yeah so we did that then we yeah it was like a mile of people like to get to the other stage but wow. we had a golf cart luckily yeah yeah um Let's see. There was like a whole area backstage. Like I think all these festivals are like this, and it's all like Converse and Nike. But it's like corporate sponsored. Type yeah, stuff. yeah. But they're giving all of this stuff free. Yeah. To all the acts. So I ended up with like a couple pairs of shoes and a T-shirt and a hat and I don't even remember. So then the second time we go on stage, the whole the whole time I didn't hear anything because all I had in my monitor was Cheryl Crow's bass player sound checking. Like I didn't, I didn't hear anything we were doing and like it's Woodstock. So there's like, there's like people in the crowd, like yeah. topless. Yeah. Cause it's Woodstock. And like, sure, there's sure. one girl, I remember she like slowly climbed her boyfriend's arms and then she slowly like got her balance and she's standing up straight and she's like, got herself. And then she just takes her top off. <laughs> that was kind of the yeah. vibe. So that's what we're walking into. And so it's you know, wild, wild ass from the beginning. I mean, wild but i don't know how wild is it is a bunch of girls with their shirts up yeah I mean, it's I mean, not normal but it's not it, it hadn't gotten crazy no first right, day it yeah. wasn't crazy yet although it well we're getting there so um so he you know we're playing acoustic One hundred and eighty thousand people at this stage yeah that's a mile of people it's you lose track after like 500 you can't really i mean that's crazy it, it's 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 hard to it's just literally a sea of faces yeah yeah, yeah it's crazy and uh and, and you're he, on the big stage at this point. The big stage. And he's not getting any kind of response because most people can, probably can't even hear him. Yeah. But to him, he's bombing. So what does he do? He tries to do what he does. So he jumps in the crowd. He was wearing one of my really favorite shirts. That goes away. He yeah. was wearing, he lost his shoes in the crowd. But then he got back on stage and he whipped his dick out, which <laughs> oh, no. I've seen his dick as much almost as my own. He just liked to take it out all the time. <laughs> Like all the time, <laughs> and, and I wonder why he got arrested. So yeah, many times. yeah, exactly. Um, so, so the stage manager yanks us off the stage, and she's like screaming, and I'm like, he's going to jail, like, because he just did that on stage in Woodstock. We're going, he's going to jail, and you know they're yelling at him, and I'm just packing my stuff up, and then I'm then then like they go into this room, and I don't know, I don't know how I had this time, but I ended up smoking a, a bowl because yeah. I was like, we're done for the day. Yeah. Apparently, like the whole thing run by DirecTV, they didn't see his dick. Yeah. And so they're like, get Andy back out there. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> great. So, so Andy, this is part of the genius of Andy. He, he, from news radio, for some reason, he had this blue foam body armor suit that he brought with him. Okay. So me and Timmy, so that's the other thing. Timmy was, didn't even have a strap. So he's sitting playing guitar on a seat and I'm got my, and I had the presence of mind at a little Kodak camera to take a photo and have him take a photo. So I have a really cool photo of me in front of the crowd Yeah, that like people are like, Oh, you Photoshop. I'm like, there was no Photoshop when yeah, I took that, that photo, but whatever. <laughs> um, and so then Andy comes out. I felt like 10 minutes later. So what, at what time of day is this? It's still the first day. First day. This is we're right before the offspring. So I don't know. Okay. I, I feel like it was late in the day, but I late lost probably, track. Yeah, evening. it was still daytime yeah. still. Um, 
And so he comes out with this fo- bo- body armor, and people are already starting to get a little unruly. And they th- somebody threw something at him, yeah. and he's like, "Bring it on, bring it on!" Oh no! And it was like a like a rainstorm of debris, bottles, cans, rocks. I had an open switchblade come by. I'm high as fuck, <laughs> and I'm like, literally, like I, I don't know. I guess I was 25, and I just thought it was great. So yeah. I'm just dodging, like, and just dodging stuff, and just bottles still, and cans. Yeah, and still just... playing. Didn't stop playing. <laughs> And then I just slowly, like as if someone's banging me on the back of the head with a hammer, I hear, get the fuck off the stage. (laughs) And they're like screaming at us to get off the stage. The stage is covered with trash. I, like the, it took them twenty minutes to clear the tr- the trash off after oh, us. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. And I remember we go backstage and like Rolling Stone photographers there takes a photo of us. I'm like, this band is going to take off right now. Yeah. This is legendary. And then the next two days happened and nobody even there's knew a footnote. We, yeah, yeah. We didn't even know we played it. You know, that's funny. Yeah. And yeah. yeah meanwhile, Flea's coming out just bare ass naked <laughs> yeah i mean honestly i'm happy we were gone <laughs> before all that so did y'all leave the next day or that day the next day yeah the 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 only real band i got to watch and enjoy which i'm not even a fan was corn yeah and i but like i was on stage and like everyone in that place was shot he comes in like playing bagpipes yeah it was cool as shit i mean yeah. i'm not i'm still not a corn fan but i was like that was a great moment you know anyway So what happens after after that? Do y'all just do more gigs? Yeah, or? we do more shows and, you know, but he, you know, he, it's very documented how he has substance abuse problems and, yeah. um, you know, it just became, well, okay, the next probably significant gig was Jacksonville. Okay. Now, Jacksonville is the same city that Jim Morrison got arrested on stage and yeah. Two Life Crew got arrested on stage. Yeah. So we show up and is not the crowd for us. I yeah. mean, this is like when, I forget his name, this is like when Florida State was like really good at football and that's all they cared about. That's it, yeah. And uh, and he was wasted. <laughs> oh my God, was he drunk. And the stage is this, like it was in the auditorium and it was like a 10 foot platform with like, there was no handrails or anything. Yeah. And he's chasing us around the stage. That was something he used to do. He used to like make mistakes and blame us. And it would be funny if he was sober, but if he wasn't sober, like it could get scary. Yeah. And he's like, I didn't want him to get me. Like, like I'm running away from him, uh, you know, and then he's getting heckled and normally he could take down heckler. No yeah. problem. Um, but he's too drunk. So he gets a wireless mic and he runs into the, he runs into the crowd and he's trying to like take this heckler down, but the heckler's like getting the best of him. Mm-hmm. So he takes his pants down, Andy does, and like wipes his butt on the guy's leg, which I didn't see this. I heard about this. Yeah. And so the police are like there and they go to the, you know, the uh, student liaison. I don't know who this girl was. She wasn't on our team, but I guess she was an Andy fan. And like without even missing a beat, she's like, oh, no, it's a bit. He's wearing a body stocking. It's fine. Yeah. And the cops believed her. So that's why we didn't get arrested. But I was just so... I was just so angry that whole oh, like man. oh yeah right before like I'm the dressing room before the show I had my brand new Taylor guitar and it fell off of me while I was tuning and broke a piece out oh. so and and I hadn't eaten like I hate Jacksonville yeah every time I go something happens <laughs> so I could probably never go there again but um yeah so after the show like oh yeah so that's going on and then some kid pulled the fire alarm and that's how the show ended is the place emptied out like <laughs> just because of the fire alarm yeah oh, perfect man. perfect actually i was happy about it and then i remember we we're at some restaurant you know after the show we'd always go and hang out with the kids like yeah. from the you know and i remember walking around the corner and it's andy and like 30 kids that are just like all around him and i don't know what he was saying and he was like right andrew and i'm like yeah whatever i was just like oh i can't believe like he just did that show and he still got all these people that like him like that yeah. i should have known what, where america was heading at that point <laughs> i guess anyway yeah. that's crazy so yeah. then how did how did it how did your time with him end it kind of just fizzled, fizzled away. Yeah, he just started. I just started getting sick of it. Like, if he before I met his accountant, it was always like, uh, you know, are we getting paid? Oh yeah. I yeah. remember one time I brought this. I went over there to, to get paid, and I was like, "Can you write me a check?" And he was like, "Yeah." And he wrote me the wrote me the check with a big smile. I was like, "Is it gonna bounce?" He's like, "Give it a whirl." I mean, that was <laughs> like what it was good, like. Yeah. No, it, it yeah. So I I finally met his accountant, and I would get 
pay directly, but you know, it was, it was, there was traumatic ex- part of the experience, you know, just, uh, he was abusive and, uh, yeah. um, you know, so again, I was an adult. I wanted to see it through. And at a certain point I just was like, I'm just too much. Done. Yeah. I can't see it through. And yeah, so I'm, I'm sad that it, it didn't go further, but it is what it is. You when know? was your last show with him? I don't remember. Yeah. I think there was a couple, it's foggy. There was one at the Roxy that was some benefit. And like when we were, do- I remember getting off stage, or like the curtain comes down. It was uh Susanna Hoffs was playing right after us. Uh huh. That was weird. Um, and then there was some other random show. I don't remember where it was. And I was playing drums oh, just wow. because I wanted to go. But like he already had someone else kind of filling in because I just kind of stopped hanging out. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. He actually had this guy playing with him for a while that I thought was, he was always nice to me, but he just seemed like a little bit of a punk. But then he started to get some traction. And that dude's name is Mark Foster, Foster the People. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, he was, I remember bumping into Andy like years later. He's like, did you know that Mark got nominated for a Grammy? And I was like, why? I didn't have, I was so yeah. out of the loop. But good song. I mean, whatever. He was always nice to me, that kid. That's so, crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. Uh, so what's what's he doing now? Like, what's... Oh, man, he's just getting arrested. Every, yeah. At, and anytime that guy gets arrested, somebody will message me like, I need to know. And I'm like... I, I don't need to know. <laughs> I let it go a while ago. Last time I saw him was 2019. Um, I was out there shooting um, Kelly D's Master of the Mic uh, show. Mm-hmm. And uh, we hung out one night, and he was super drunk. Yeah. And I mean, it was fun. I remember having a lot of laughs and then I took a few photos and then he doesn't remember. He only remembers we hung out. He doesn't remember anything that happened. That's crazy. Really sad. Yeah. That is sad. So, yeah. Oh, you hate to see that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I would, I, I would love to like, you know, hang out. I just, you know, I don't think he's got it together and yeah. I don't know. I don't need to go back to LA. I've kind of done that. So, yeah. Yeah. Tell me now about your dream gig, whether to whether that's playing or shooting. Yeah, definitely. I feel like I've passed my interest in playing and, and acting and all that. Yeah. It's definitely shooting. So I don't know. A lot of people maybe don't know how it works. But like when you're doing a big show with a big band, if you even get approved, you're getting three songs, if you're lucky, from the pit, mm-hmm. otherwise from the soundboard. Yeah. So for me, the dream gig would get to go to the next level where I had all access on stage and it would be for like my top, well, my top band would be Grateful Dead, but Jerry Garcia has been gone and Dead and Company's fine. I've shot them. Yeah. But it's not the here, same. Shot them here in town? Yeah. 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 At uh, Dos Equis. Um, and then I'm going to hopefully be shooting Bob Weir, who's from oh, the, well, the yeah. Dead yeah, coming yeah. up. But, you know, um, Fish is one on my list that like Trey was at the Bomb Factory and I didn't get approved because he didn't let anyone shoot but like Phil Clark in, which I was bummed, but yeah. it happens. But yeah, I mean, really, it's 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 not even about the band it would be more about the access the access yeah you know that's just to me because everybody can get the same types of shots from the pit that's so andrew man thank you so much for coming on this is so much fun yeah i'm glad i remembered it (laughs) (laughs) no they were fantastic stories so how can people uh, kind of find out about you and see see what see kind of, like your shots yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, well, you can always go to drulio.com, d r e w l i o.com, Drulio photo on Instagram. And uh, you know, I'm available. People probably think I'm too busy. If you want me to shoot something, hit me up. Like, That's cool. it's a good chance. And then I just started uh, doing the Dallas Famous podcast on Deep Ellum Radio. Yes, absolutely. And it's fantastic, y'all. Everybody needs to go check that. We'll, Thanks. We'll, we'll be sure to push that also. Awesome. That's great. Right on. Man, Andrew, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This thanks, has been fun. man. It's yeah. been fun. All right, there he goes. Big thanks to Andrew Sherman for coming on the podcast. It's a lot of fun getting to hear those pretty wild stories. Y'all please go check him out, druliophoto.com. Also check out the Dallas Famous Podcast on Deep Ellum Radio or wherever you get your podcasts. As always, thank you for listening to The Strangest Gig. Please give us a follow on Instagram at The Strangest Gig. Tell your friends about us. Help us spread the word if you like what we're doing. And we'll see you back here next month. Until then, if you find yourself a bitch of the century, just remember, gig's a gig, right? <laughs>